Good YouTube, it's Cuddle of Death today. Hey, happy day, boo! And I'm so excited to be bringing you guys my very first battle in the CCL, the Combined Championship League. It is a showdown league with a bunch of my friends from all different skill levels of Pokemon. We just did our draft recently. Uh, it was streamed on Twitch and whatnot. Really freaking fun. Uh, Z moves are banned, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there, but I am your coach for the Goldenrod Grookies, and I'll be post commentating my battle because lately I haven't been feeling that well. So hopefully you guys can understand. And with it being up against all of my friends with their skill levels, including mine, and I'm so freaking rusty with Pokemon battling you guys, uh, keep in mind that these battles aren't meant to be taken like super serious and like super sweaty. If you're watching that and you get mad about the plays that are being made, then you probably shouldn't watch, but... <laughs> but, uh, my opponent this week is One Whole Woot, aka my good friend Wyatt. And looking at his team... He has a pretty freaking beefy team. Not super fast at all compared to what I ended up drafting. And I should have more information down in the description in regards to like what's banned. Uh, and I should probably include a link to our current drafts as well if you want to view all the different teams. Their win losses, uh, what's been drafted and whatnot. All of that should be in the description. But looking at his team, he has a few different leads here. Uh, he either has a high dragon lead or a modem, <laughs> the rotom mo lead. Uh, and for me, I actually have a few different leads as well, being my Yuxi, my Garchomp, or honestly, my rotom heat. Uh, now, I will also preface this with saying, I guess I didn't understand completely how Mold Breaker worked. I thought that Mold Breaker would only work if uh, you switch in a Pokemon with Mold Breaker on something that's levitating. But I was informed after that it works no matter if I were to switch in a Pokemon against something that has Mold Breaker or not, but that's just how rusty I am. Uh, so looking at this team, I decided my safest lead at that point in time was gonna be my Rotom Heat, my cute little oven. So let's go ahead and get this battle started. So I lead off with my Rotom Cheat here. He goes into High Dragon. Now I'm running a super weird set, I actually have uh, Thunder Wave as well as Will-O-Wisp. It's not something that I would ever recommend, but the reason for that was the fact that I have a Togekiss on my team. There was actually two different teams that I had that I wanted to try against Woot, uh, and I just kind of flipped a coin and this is the one I ended up with. But this team is really built around my Togekiss being able to paralyze as many Pokemon as possible to get that nasty plot and Air Slash up. As you can see here, he swaps into his Excadrill, and he's using his Rock Slide, which means he has some sort of choice item. I was wondering at the time if it was a choice band. Uh, I tried to burn him back there and miss it. It was so freaking sad. That could have helped me so much. But uh, he gets a Rock Slide off. I have to do a switch into my Tindacruel. Then he goes into his Gyarados. Now his Gyarados is his Mega. Uh, and I knew that this was the scariest thing on his team. So I built a lot around it as well. Again, I have... I believe three, two or three different Pokemon that can paralyze. So I go ahead and get the paralysis off on his Gyarados, followed up with the Memento there to drop all of that boost that he had going on, uh, deal a little bit of damage with Volt Switch there, and bring in my Landorus to bring down his attack even more. And I go ahead and take him out like nobody's business. He switches back into his Excadrill. I've got my Rotom Heat out, but of course I know that he's got Mold Breaker and I switch out into my defensive uh, Garchomp here. Not predicting the switch like I should have. Oh my goodness, I'm very well aware of that. So I go ahead and get my rocks up, uh, trying to force, I think I was trying to force a defog at that time. Uh, so I go ahead and switch while he defogs. And I wasn't sure which one of us was going to be faster, depending on how he was built. I go for the overheat, and since I don't have really any special attack investments, I don't really take him out here. Uh, he goes for the Volt Switch, goes into his Conkeldur, and I'm like, perfect, I can go ahead and paralyze him and let my Rotom Heat die. I go into my Togekiss, and of course, it is freaking time to start para-flinching like crazy. Anybody who has seen a competitive Togekiss knows exactly how para-flinch works. It's, it's so stupid. So, uh, I get that all set up. Starting to recover my HP with his leftovers, he goes back into his Excadrill. I know that this thing hits like a truck, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch out to my Rocky Helmet Garchomp here, and he does a little bit of damage to himself. 
Uh, and again, it, it seems like he is choice banded or choice scarfed. It looks like banded though, based off of everything. Uh, he goes back into his Rotom. I use knockoff to secure the kill here. And honestly, at this point, we're three and three. I'm kind of feeling a little bit confident, but a little worried about potentially his Grand Bull. He comes back out with Excadrill. I honestly can't remember why I gave him my Tentacruel. Uh, and he goes into High Dragon. So I start setting up my nasty plots because it looks like he's got, I think that's HP Ice. Uh, so I'm like, I get the paralysis off, I get a nasty plot off. He's doing a bit of damage, but because he no longer outspeeds me, I can safely roost up, uh, dropping my flying typing temporarily and confirming that that is hidden power ice. I start getting air slashes off and it's looking pretty darn good. But at the same time, his Excadrill comes back in and I thought it was choice banded, but I actually, it turns out it looks like it was scarfed. It outsped my timid max speed Togekiss. I send my choice banded Landorus in it's down to the final Pokemon. I know that Landorus can still do a ton of damage, but unfortunately with that Intimidate, he's not going to be able to take the win here. And Gramble wins it for Wyatt. Uh, this was a freaking awesome first battle for me, especially since it's been a while since I've done any battles. Obviously, hindsight's 2020, and looking at this on the outside as like a viewer, there's tons of different predictions that I should have gotten right. But at the same time, it's like, consider how rusty I am. I was pretty happy though that I didn't get swept <laughs> and honestly it was like a nice refreshing battle to get back into things. I honestly also cannot wait for Pokemon Sword and Shield. I want to try really hard to get better at competitive battling. Uh, I was never really like amazing or anything but there's so many more things out there now since Sun and Moon released and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon that I'm, I have not kept up with. so. I thought it'd be kind of cool. We might have free for alls back on the channel soon as well. So keep an eye out for that. But that concludes my very first CCL week one battle. Unfortunately, it was a loss, but you know what? That's okay. Hopefully we can at least secure one win <laughs> in the CCL. I believe my opponent next week is going to be Isabel of the Las Vegas Victinis with co-coach Cyclone the Ghost. Uh, so I greatly look forward to next week's battle and all battles for the CCL on my perspective will be uploaded every Sunday. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to smash that like button. If my opponents do have any sort of like YouTube, if they're active on it or Twitter that they want linked, all of that stuff will be linked down in the description. Make sure to go check them out. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and see you guys in the next video. We've got tons of content coming your way. Thank you guys so much for the love and support. Bye bye.